Welcome back to another episode on Find Joy with Joyan, the podcast that is all about helping you live and lead a life with joy. I'm your host, Joyan Chat, and every Wednesday we are giving you access to the world's best and brightest minds in their fields on our show. Listen in as these leaders impart their wisdom, inspiration, and stories to empower you to live joyfully with intention, passion, and purpose. And celebrate the struggles and overcome the challenges we may face each day with the tools and insights that we are going to share with you. Whether you are looking to improve your relationship, find your passion, learn how to embrace the present moment, deepen your spiritual connection, or learn the magic of manifestation and law of attraction to attract more abundance, this podcast is here to guide you every step of the way. As your host, I am also challenging myself to dig deeper, to learn and unlearn and write along with you. We are not here to tell you how to live your life because it is your life. But this life is all that we have right now. So my friend, why not live our life to the fullest? So I hope these conversations and stories will guide and inspire you to live your life to your highest potential and a life that you are proud of as you continue to grow and evolve in your own journey. So if you are ready to start living a more passionate, purposeful and joyful life, join us every Wednesday on Find Joy with Joyanne for inspirational stories, powerful message, fun conversations and empowering talks with me and my special guests and friends. And now without further ado, let's dive into today's episode. Happy holidays, Find Joy with Joy and listeners. I hope you have had the most joyous Christmas celebrations and ready for the new year. I'm grateful to you for another year of support, growth and listenership and we have grown a lot this year and it wouldn't be possible without you. So if you like this show, well you certainly do if you're listening to me now, please share with your friends and family and spread the joy together. Because this has been my mission since day one and it will always be my why behind the show. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. And if you have any question or any feedback, you know where to find me. Well, if you don't, the best way to find me and connect with me on a daily basis is um, and, and see what I'm up to is on Instagram. And I know I have too many Instagram accounts and it might be confusing sometimes. But my main account is joyan.chan. And this podcast, it will be find Joy with Joanne underscore podcast. And my coaching account would be Joanne Chan Coaching. All right. And also, I have to let you know that we are going to call it a season and we are going to rebrand this podcast in 2024 and season two is coming your way. So stay tuned because I'm always looking for ways to make it a better experience for you all. And 2024 is only five days away and I don't know what you're feeling about it. And I would love to hear it from you. But this year hasn't been easy for me at all, to be honest, right? But there are always lessons to learn, tough choices to make, and things to be grateful for. This year, I was fortunate enough to meet many new people, friends, and business partners that I could trust to build our businesses together and to be in the VDP community of heart-centered coaches and purpose-driven entrepreneurs, the best community online that I call family. And friends who can put up with my nonsense and do fun things together outside of work. So looking back on 2023, I would say that I didn't do it alone. And I couldn't have survived if I did it all alone. It was a joyful, exciting and fruitful year for sure. Yes, it was tough, right? I don't want to lie about it. It was tough. But if I could be extremely honest with you, it was tough because I was trying to do life alone. And we know that we could never do life alone. And that was my biggest lesson this year. And not forgetting my lifetime adventure to aerospace camp. And everybody is asking me what is next for you, Joanne. And I know for most people, right, year end is where everybody is making plans and setting goals for the new year. But I feel like not planning for anything this time around. And really just going with the flow, like hands off the wheel and trust that everything is already planned for me. And this truly is the biggest shift. And if you have been listening to this podcast long enough, you will know that to be true. And which is why I love podcasting so much. And I love talking to other people and asking them questions because I'm receiving so much. And our guests that have been so generous in sharing 
And I'm so glad that I was able to share it all with you. So once again, thank you so much for being here and trusting me to be your guide, to be your mentor, to be your coach or your messenger or whatever you see me to be or for whatever reason that you are listening to me or to this show. And since this will be our final episode for the year of 2023, I thought of doing something special to wrap things up. So I went back to our archives and pulled out some of the greatest moments that we shared on our podcast throughout the year that has deeply touched my heart and soul and the messages that I thought you would need to hear now before the year ends. And in case you missed some of the guest episodes, I will put all the links to each individual episode in the show notes below so you can go back and listen to it. And now, without further ado, let's dive into some of the best parts of 2023 on our show. You also talk about sometimes, you know, we want to force things to happen and it's just not happening. So if my manifestation doesn't happen, um, am I doing it wrong or is it just not happening? Is it just not what, it's not for my highest good? I think that it, your manifestation is happening, just maybe not in the way that you thought it was going to happen or you wanted it to happen. Certainly, there are times when it feels like, okay, this isn't happening, but it is because something better is happening either for you or for the collective whole. And oftentimes, we don't see that until years down the line, because when we're in it, it's really hard to see. But you know, when a lot of, another thing is a lot of times our manifestations are coming to us in a totally different way than we could ever imagine on, on a totally different timeline, right? Cause we have a timeline by which we're trying to have things happen, but the universe's timeline might be a little different than ours. And there could be a lot of good reasons for that. So I think that's where that trust factor or, you know, if religious people call it faith, whatever you want to call it, it's that faith or that trust that it's all, working out for the highest good and we don't have to know how or when we just have to trust that if we're doing our part that the universe is doing its part how can people set goals that actually manifest what are what are the steps yeah ooh, i love talking about this so the first thing is and this is i love this step because i, I love this way of setting goals because i think it's very practical and very doable Because otherwise, sometimes, you know, if you're just writing down in a book what you want to manifest, it can feel like a wish. Like, I don't know if it's going to happen or not. But I do I do highly recommend writing things down, though, because I've I've manifested some crazy things just by writing it down in a book. But one really powerful way of manifesting is to think of that thing that you would like and by when you would like it, because you may not get it by when. But let's let's set a timeline, because otherwise it's like, who knows when it could happen. And then go, okay, what's the very last thing that would happen that would let me know that I got that goal? So say my goal, using the musician example, say my goal is to play a concert, right? To play a show. So I would know that I had achieved that goal because I would see myself standing on the stage and see all my friends out there like, yeah, clapping, right? So that's how I would know that that came true, right? So say I want by June 30th, 2023, I want to have played my first show. And how I know I'm going to get that is I'm standing on stage and I can see all the people out in the audience and I know that I am playing my show. So then what you want to do is you want to take that moment and you want to um, think you want to actually step into that moment, like visualize it where you're looking through your own eyes and you want to see everything you're going to see, hear everything you're going to hear, feel everything you're going to feel and really turn up those emotions because your emotions are what's going to supercharge your manifestations. So like imagine you have a dial like on an old TV set and just turn those good feeling emotions up, 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 up so much. Like, and when you can just hardly stay on how good it feels and you're seeing everything, you're hearing everything, then you step out of the visualization so that you see yourself in the picture. So you're no longer looking through your own eyes. Now you see yourself in the picture. And um, the reason why we do that is because if you stay looking through your own eyes, your subconscious mind is going to go, okay, they already got it. Great. But if you feel all that juicy feeling and that wonderful moment, and then you step out of it, your subconscious mind goes, whoa, 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 what just happened? Like that was so good. I want more of that. And it's going to help put you on a track to get that thing. Right. So you see yourself in that moment. And then what you can do if you want is you can, after the visualizing part, go back and go, okay, what's the next last thing I need to do? And kind of backward plan it if you want. But I 
I don't think the planning is the most important because I think that the vision is the most important thing because if you have a strong vision, you are going to take the steps that you need to get there. And sometimes we can get too attached to exactly how something's going to happen. And then it doesn't go that way. And we get like freaked out by it. So really thinking, okay, well, if I want to get, if I want to play a show on June 30th, 2023, what's the first step that I would take? And then just taking that first step. And as the next step comes along, taking the next step. And before you know it, you're playing that show. So there's this thing she calls spiritual bypassing, where it's like we want to jump over the hard part and be peaceful already. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but I think we need to do both. So therapeutic mindfulness, which is you know, the name of my book as well, it's about how to use it to go into the hurt, the anger, the depression, the judgment, how to go into the feelings and do some healing work. And, and it can be a short amount of time. It can be half an hour. And then you go back to your life or you can do the positive. But if you never do anything with the negative feelings, they just wait. They wait and they stack up. And when you're done, your, you know, your amazing retreat that was wonderful for your heart and your mind, or you've done your Netflix bins, that no my words, Netflix bins, <laughs> then it's all waiting for you. So spending some time going into it, because if you if you never go into it, then you're giving your mind the fit the um, subconscious beliefs. I shouldn't have these feelings. I can't deal with them. They just need to go away. I shouldn't have to face them or I can't face them or they're too scary. And when we believe that, then every time we push it away, we're reinforcing fear or reinforcing resistance. Um, there's a wonderful speaker author. You may have heard of her, Tara Brock, who wrote a book, Radical Acceptance. Yeah. It's so funny because when she, when I read the beginning part of her book, I already knew where she was going because she was talking about this. She was actually living in a community and following a guru. And in the morning, she would do her you know, deep meditation every morning and she would feel really peaceful. And by the end of every day, she'd be right back to where she was. And I understood that she was only meditating on the positive and she was never looking at the negative. Okay. It's also what I'm doing right now <laughs> so you know i meditate in the morning after my yoga and i do everything my mm -hmm. morning routine and i felt awesome but again when i started my day or i just going through the day you know and i felt all these negative emotions and it's, it's normal right as a human being or I it is all these triggers you know that okay so for someone who is feeling this negative emo and you said it perfectly because in the past, when I felt all these negative emotions, the first thing that came to mind is going to meditation, like meditate, meditate on it, right? And and I did, and I felt good, you know, I felt like, okay, I am feeling my emotions, but I don't really know what I was doing. So now you are telling us to go into the hurt, to feel the sensations, to feel the negative feeling and do the healing work, like how do we actually do that? Can you break down the process? You know, like how? I want to know how. Yes, absolutely. Um, and of course, just so everyone um, has this in the back of their mind, for some people, they'll be able to jump into this right away. And for some people, there'll be a lot of blocks because the more you run away from them, again, it reinforces fear around feeling. And so um, in, my book is called Therapeutic Mindfulness, A Healing Skill, Not a Coping Skill. And I'm very deliberate about that. And so um, the process is actually very simple. It's very simple. But if it's hard and it just doesn't click like that, then it might be a good idea to get into the book because it talks about resistance. It talks about judgment. It talks with judgment, by the way, will block your efforts to heal anything. If you think you should be over this by now, you're stupid for having the feelings, they're ridiculous, and that makes you dumb, you will not heal because that will block it unless you can get into a mindset of self-compassion and openness. So I talk about shifting the mindset. I talk about working with resistance. So, so there's a lot in there, but the process itself is actually really simple. And just so you know, everyone, I do have goodies on my website. There are downloads with the process and with the main worksheets that I give to my clients. So first, if we try to go into our body and feel 
what's uncomfortable. We're, whether it's anxiety, we're freaking about it. St- stuff brings up anxiety for us and we need to control or avoid stuff. You know, so if you have a lot of anxiety or something makes you angry or someone gets you gets you down on yourself or something flashes you back to an angry father, whatever it is, um, the thing that triggers you, you can go into that emotion. But when you try to feel it, what happens is our brain starts talking. It just goes and it tells a story. You'll, you'll hear Brene Brown say, the story I'm telling myself is. Because <laughs> yeah. your brain is telling a story and it's saying things like, oh, well, here's what they were really thinking when they did that. And they're just being cruel. But there must it must be you. Everyone's always cruel to you. It always comes back to this because something's wrong with you. You're defective. No one will ever like you. You'll always be alone. It'll go on a rant like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and... um is any of that rant familiar? Have you heard people talk like that? Of course, absolutely, right? I mean, we all have our own stories and we keep repeating those stories to ourselves over and over and over again. Exactly. <laughs> and so I think the reason why people don't go into emotions is they don't know how to. I didn't know how to because once you try, your story starts going. And once the story's going, the thing about the story is... Every sentence in that, if you go back to that rant I just did, every sentence in that story justifies why you should feel bad. But not only should you feel bad, you should be, you should be feeling worse. And let me tell you why. So the longer you're in the story, the worse you feel. So no wonder we don't want to try to be with our emotions because that story jumps in and it's just worse and worse and worse. So there is a solution. If you're feeling anxious for you personally, Joanne, mm. where does that show up in your, in your body? When I'm feeling anxious, I feel in my heart or my throat, your heart, like this area, you know? Ah, okay. And for you, is it um, a pounding or a squeezing or a heavy? I think um, it's squeezing and squeezing. Yeah. Okay. So squeezing in the heart and the throat, that sounds really uncomfortable, but that is, is where you can find the healing. So in the process, first you identify a trigger. If you're already feeling, you don't need to identify something. But like if you have a daily meditation practice and you say twice a week, I'm going to work on something that's hard. Okay. We're going to do nice meditation. We're also going to do therapeutic mindfulness, um, which is a form of mindfulness meditation. And you're going to bring up every time my coworker or boss does this, or every time you know, my sister acts this way or whatever it is that triggers you, then I feel something. So you can think about that and the feelings will come up. Once you have emotions present, the process is to get out of your thoughts and into your body. So I would say to you, if you're anxious, where's the feeling in your body? And you say, it's squeezing on my heart and my throat. Okay. And then I start to ask what I call body focusing questions. And these are on my website, so it's available to anybody. If that feeling was its own thing, right? It was its own physical thing. So I'll say, if the feeling had a size, how big would it be? If it had a color, what color would it be? Does it have a sense of hot or cold? If it had a temperature, you know, and if it had a texture, what would it feel like to touch? These sound really strange. I almost hesitate to tell you what these are because people are probably like, I've never felt that. But I'm telling you, with very, very few exceptions ever, when I ask people this and I just say, just whatever comes up, it does. don't worry about right or wrong answers. If they are in the middle of feeling it and they ask themselves that question, answers pop up. Sometimes it is, uh, sometimes there is a color, sometimes there is a temperature, sometimes they're not, but usually there's a lot of details that come up. And once I'm done asking the body focusing questions for most people, if they're focusing on that, the story is actually gone or somewhere way in the background. And the feeling is vivid. It's this blue squishy, heavy thing over their chest, or it's a tight fist in their throat and it's hot right? They can feel it and I'll have them feel every inch of it. So that's the part where they get that focused attention. And then to make the magic happen, I tell them, okay, so you've got this feeling, it's tight, it's hot, it's squeezing in your throat. It's the size of a baseball or the size of a fist. And it's so uncomfortable. Allow it to be there. 
give it all the space it needs. Let it be there. Give it space. Open up to it. Your only job is to observe. That's it. You know, on my journey, when I started the healing process, my first step was um, I found Tony, Tony Robbins through a quote. Everything, you know, serendipity, everything just happened. You know what I mean? When the student is ready, the teacher will show up. Right, right, right. And so I read this quote that said, if you do what you have always done, you will get what you have always gotten. And that for me was really enlightening because I realized I wanted my life to be different, but I never did anything about it, you know? And um, I didn't know Tony. I didn't know anything about him. And I remember reading a little bit and going online, researching a little bit. I remember asking my wife, and I said, do you know this Tony Robbins guy? Have you heard about this guy? And she said, yeah, I think I think it's like a, it's an American dude. And I think he's like a speaker, a motivational speaker. And you know, Joey, and something happened at that moment. For the first time in my life, I said, do you think he can help me? See, it was that moment of realization, which is very important in life. The moment I realized I cannot do it myself. You know, is there someone that can help me? Not is there someone that can do it for me, but is there someone that can help me do it? See? And that's a, ma- a huge, huge difference, right? We, we oftentimes hear of people that want to change, yet they wait for someone to just change it for them or something that would just change it. And that doesn't work. doesn't exist. We have to do the work, right? And so very soon after, the next door opened up and he had an event in Sydney. And so we went to the event right away. I think it was a week after or something like that. And it was amazing. It really transformed my life and did a lot, a lot of good. And I, um, my, my business took off. My business went to seven figures. We employed 40 people. You know, we were like money, everything. I was feeling really good. I'm like, Oh my God, you know, uh, this is brilliant. Right. But then about a year and a half later, I started to feel really anxious again and really, kind of everything was kind of going backwards again and i remember you know asking my coach at the time say hey this is happening and uh please help me i don't want to go back because it feels even worse than it used to feel and so she helped me with different things but nothing was working you know and i realized you know joanne the moment you realize okay this person got me from there to here but will not be able to get me from here to there, right? And so one day driving to work, I hear a podcast and that podcast was talking about shamanism. And again, you know the moment you hear something and you, and you know exactly that is the missing link? Yep. That is exactly how it was. I'm driving down the road and I'm listening to this guy talking and in my soul, I'm like, wow, this is me. This is what is missing. I need to do that. And so I embarked on another journey, which was very, very powerful, very, very challenging. Um, and eventually got me to travel back and forth from you know, Australia to Peru and, and continue my work. And eventually, you know, getting taught this, this beautiful art and, and practice. Um, and today, working with people, I realized that, you know, coaching or, or, or similar practices like that, they work, but they work a little on the inner journey, but predominantly the outer journey, right? Yet when we go and look for something to achieve, yet we are not 100% home, what happens is the achievement only fills a void. And so we constantly go from one achieving to another, to another, to another, to another, just to feel that feeling that we crave so much. And what that causes, though, is for us to spin our wheel constantly and never being happy, never being fulfilled. It's always the next thing, the next shiny object. Then you see a friend or someone online or whatever. It's like, oh my God, I need that. You know, it's that constant 
endless search for something that is not there. Where shamanism is the opposite. You know, it really brings you home and allows for you to set a goal that is not there to fill the void, but is there to represent who you are as a human. And that is a beautiful journey because now you're working with integrity, you're working, working with authenticity, and that thing is not there to make you feel a certain way, but it's just a way to you express yourself. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so in 2018, we went into a business venture and the business venture didn't go well. And after a court case and, and, and stuff like that, we lost all our money. We lost all our business. We had to let go of everybody. Um, and two days later, my wife was diagnosed with cancer. Wow. Right. So now life, what did life do? Elevated everything, brought us in a place of serenity, peace, but also wealth. But then all of a sudden took everything. And it was like, okay, you have learned a lot, but do you know what you have learned? How will you put that into practice? You know what I mean? It was a very humbling moment because as a man, having a, 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 you know, an unwell wife and having no money, the inner battle starts to go. The voice in your mind starts to talk, yeah? So for me, it was all about staying in that trust, staying in that faith that I will find the way to get through this, even though it will be challenging, but also my life will never be the same. And also I will never go back to construction. I will now, what I will use for our own family, I will now, I am now prepared to share with others. And so my approach to working with people today is a combination of modern and ancient. So people get to achieve their goals, but become the person who will achieve it. You know, when we are in challenges, when we are facing like a huge challenge or obstacles in life, you know, that's like in, inevitable. And most people, we either resist, like you said, you know, or we uh, or blame, you know, others, you know, like, why is this happening to me? So what is really the first step to start accepting what is going on in your life, no matter how big, how small, right? And then how do we, how do we deal with challenges? Like how do we overcome or, you know, um, find a solution, you know, because eventually that's, that's what we want to do, right? With challenges, because we do want to overcome and, um, you know, get to the other side. Yeah, that's a terrific question. And when you're in the thick of a challenge, and someone tells you to accept it, that is nearly impossible. So I will start by saying acceptance isn't this thing that we experience 24-7. We're not constantly accepting of our struggles, but what we're aiming for is just small moments of acceptance each day. So if we're going through a challenge, can we have a small moment where we take a breath, we feel into our heart, we soften our body, and we just say to ourselves, right here, right now, I'm safe, I'm enough, I'm okay. And so we just cultivate these small micro moments of acceptance and we trust that over time these add up. Because what often happens is people face a challenge and then they do this striving towards acceptance or striving towards finding the gift, the learning. And so we just continue to be hard on ourselves. And so the advice I would give around how do you start to do that is just to notice when you're resisting. So when is your mind saying, it's not fair, this never happens to other people, I'll never get through this, what did I do wrong? So when we notice that harsh inner voice that's directing criticism either upon ourselves or out to the world, we can just soften and we can take a breath and we can ask ourselves, are these thoughts kind? Are they helpful? 
Do they help me be the person I want to be deep down inside? So that's step one, really learning to become aware of when our mind is resisting. And then from there, we can drop into our bodies and we can notice where do we feel the resistance? Does it come up heavy across your forehead as busy thoughts and ruminations? Do you feel your resistance in your heart? It gets heavy or closed off. Does your posture change when you're resisting? Do you hunch over? Does your neck move forward? Do you feel it as a tightness in your gut? So our body holds the resistance. And if we can come down from our mind into our body, soften the body, soften the resistance, and then if we can get into the world of our heart, and that's where we can probably locate some compassion, some acceptance, some wisdom. So we get curious about our mind, the habits of resistance. We move into how we feel them in our body. We soften our body and then we move into our heart. And so that's really what a moment of acceptance looks like. And if you did that once a week, once a day, you'd really start to notice a difference. That's really interesting because even me personally, I would think that resistance that live in our mind, you know, they live in our head, you know, our head, and it's like the thoughts, right? We are resisting because we have certain thoughts about how things should be, and you know, so it's interesting to hear that you know something that I write down here is that our body holds the resistance. That is really interesting. Maybe can we like dive deeper into like why our body holds the resistance? Because I think a lot of people are also thinking the same as me. Like we think resistance is just like thoughts, you know, that we have. Absolutely. And that's another really terrific question and just shows how mind centric we are. <laughs> so as humans, Four-fifths of our experience happens in our nervous system, in our body, and only one-fifth happens in our mind. But most of us live in our mind. So at any point, we're ignoring four-fifths of our experience if we're not curious about the body. And so this isn't just us. Society tells us that the mind is a better indicator to make decisions, to live life than the body. But if we continue to ignore the way our body communicates with us, that's when we get stressed, when we get sick, um, when we get mystery illnesses. So just reminding ourselves that four-fifths of our experience every day is in our bodies, in our nervous systems. The fight or flight response, the butterflies in our tummy, the heavy heart, the aching neck, all of those signs are your body's way of communicating with you. And most of us don't learn to listen to these whispers We don't honour that. So even introducing small practices each day to listen to your body can be a really powerful path to well-being. You know, if you keep visualising or meditating, but you have this subconscious belief they are not supporting the the outcome that you want, the desire, then you're still going to support that yourself. That That is my understanding. I think even though I spend... 70% of my life practice removing the subconscious beliefs it's very important to understand what comes first and so the exercise and the creation that I've given you comes before the belief because you don't know what is being blocked so when you say I want to remove this the, the subconscious belief we have infinite subconscious belief And so we can spend our whole life digging and dig ourselves into a hole that has no gold. So we first want to find what gold we're digging for. That's where that visualization comes in. And then when you say that practical step, how would I live my life through that? 
as fear will come, as fear will arise, that is blocking that particular manifestation. And it is that subconscious belief that you will want to shift. So it's not either or, right? Creation is never either or. It's always and. I am creating, and as I am creating, I'm releasing what stands in the way of creation. But if you're just releasing without creating, you will be releasing for the rest of your life. <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, the universe asks, this is, this is a question that I want us all to play with. The universe answers exactly what we ask. So if I say, okay, guys, what is the color you're thinking about? There it is. Red, blue, congratulations. Well, I tell you what, were you thinking about the color before I asked you? Of course not. But the second I asked you, you had to have answered it. So if we continually ask a question, what is my block to abundance? The universe says, oh, honey, you want another block? Here you go. <laughs> Let's remove it. What is my block to making money now? Oh, here is another one. Here's the one from seven generations back. Here is one from another dimension. Here is one from this culture. But if we ask a question, what is the most optimal choice? decision or action i am to take today towards my prosperity the universe has no chance but to give you an answer so it's this this is the gold right you see this is the gold um for our coaching practices what we do is and if you have done have not done it for the year, a lot of people have done the theme for the year. So I'm going to give you the gorgeous sauce for creating a full year. doesn't matter when you listen to it. Middle of the year, December, it's never too late to create a gorgeous year. You first ask yourself, what would be the best theme for me for the year? You go with the first inkling, whether it came as peace or it came as abundance, whatever it came. That's my theme for the year. Then you say, great, what is my theme for this month? to support my theme for the year. It's very important. Our logical brain likes to break things down. We want to give structure. Why? So there is flow, like we talked earlier. So you got your, and I will be very vulnerable. I'll tell you mine. Okay, so mine for this year was miraculous global expansion. I'm witnessing it already 10 days into the year. I'm like, what? Okay. So for January, mine was laying loving foundations. So whatever yours will be, see, for me, laying loving foundations in January supports my theme for the year. So then every day in the morning, between you peeing and brushing your teeth, so we can stack the habit in, <laughs> you're going to stack the habit in, you're going to ask the most important question, I believe, that can change everything for you in your life. And if you would ask it literally, it, it will change your life literally. What is one decision I am to make? Or one action I am to take today to support my theme for the months in the best and highest and most aligned way, word for word. And then you pause and you will be miraculously amazed as you will get your answer, just like you got the color with the same ease where that intuitive of beings. And if it tells you go for a walk, you go for a walk. And if it tells you, check Tesla, check Tesla, whatever you get, take that action immediately. And once you do, realize everything else is a bonus because you've done the most important thing for the day to create the most phenomenal year. I'm going to ask a question because I have been doing meditation. I try so many techniques and to... To, to speak to the universe, angels, to be guided, to have an answer. And I just couldn't find any answer. I just couldn't hear anything or see anything, you know, look, asking for a sign and just nothing. We, we overthink it. Uh, you know, our scared self lies to us with all of those things about us. If we weren't intuitive, we wouldn't be alive. It's that simple. It's our birthright. So here's an example. I'll prove to everybody that you're intuitive. Have you ever had a name of a friend come to mind and that friend called you? Or you called them? Or they said, I was just thinking about you? Yeah, I had. There's not one person on this planet that haven't had that. And so we overthink it. And we, it's not a question of not receiving an answer from the universe. It's a question of not trusting 
the answer we receive. Because it can't be possibly that easy. Heaven forbid it can be that easy. And I'm here to tell you, it is and you are intuitive. You are so intuitive that you use the reason to block your intuition. <laughs> so, you know, it can't possibly be that easy. The fear starts chattering. So, um, and we can do it all day long. Yeah, I could ask a very deep spiritual question and the answer will come just like the color. Like, so I want, I want you to just close your eyes for a moment. Just for a moment, close your eyes. And I'm going to ask you a very beautiful yet effortless spiritual question. The first association that comes to your mind. Joanne, what were you really born to do? What were you born to do? First association, what comes to mind? To bring joy to the world. Oh my goodness. I mean, I have chills. <laughs> That's it. We, are, we have a birthright. So it's not that we are disconnected. It's that we're so busy questioning. We don't hear answers. So starting today, you, you get to create the most guided life of miracles. Oh my God. I'm because it's easy. <laughs> yeah. Because it's easy. That's not complicated. It's, it's God's gift to us. It's universe's gift to us. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, let me... <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry i should have given the heads up for the permission that was bad ethics but i just wanted you to feel how how effortless and gorgeous it is so what happens we're not asking the right questions that is the art the art of creation is knowing how to ask the guided question pause for a second to receive an answer and act on it all right, come back to me now. I hope you enjoyed this special year end episode. And before I let you go, and before we step into a brand new year, may this year end bring you moments of reflection, joy, and connection with your higher self. Maybe this year didn't go exactly as you planned. Maybe you made some mistakes. Maybe some things ended that you expected to stay. Maybe you didn't achieve every single goal. Or maybe someone entered your life that just didn't make sense. But you still learn from all of it and you still survive and you're still here standing strong and you get to continue working toward the life you want so celebrate that and let's carry the lessons of this year into the next and let's continue these meaningful conversations for many years to come and i wish you all a joyous holiday season and a fantastic new year and i will see you soon in the new year bye for now and i love you Thank you again for tuning to Find Joy with Julian podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, you can help support this podcast in one of three ways. One, take a screenshot of this episode and share it on your IG story and tag me at findjoywithjoyan underscore podcast so I can repost and connect with you. Two, share this podcast with a friend or a family member. And three, leave a positive review on Apple Podcasts so we can continue to grow and reach more listeners worldwide. Make sure you also subscribe so you don't miss out on any episode coming Wednesday. Thanks for being here and I will see you soon in the next episode.